does anybody else cut the lid off the glue when it's getting low? They never make the bushes long enough to reach the bottom. It's still good glue. I don't know. They always seem to make you want to buy more. We've got some first fixing to do today, guys. This is going to be the ensuite. So we've got a big roll top bath going in here. We've got shower tray in this corner, I believe. Either this corner or that corner, I can't quite remember. Off the top of my head. And we've got toilet over here somewhere and then basins. So I've got all the drawing anyway. First thing I always do is mark out where everything's going on the floor and sort out my saws and waste and stuff. So saw pipe's coming up in that corner on the downstairs. So we need to bring it, bring it through with all the waste under the floor and everything. But I'll get all them put in for a start and uh, I'll try and get some shots. It's quite busy here today, so I'm not too sure how much I'm going to be able to film, but I'll uh, get what I can. And obviously we've got heating going in here as well. I'm not too sure on the radiator positions yet. They're not actually marked on the drawing, so I'll have to discuss that with the client when he gets back. But we've got plenty to crack on with anyway for a start. Obviously, probably got some hot and colds to get down there because they want a basin. There's like a little bar area as well. So that's what we're going to crack on with for, for today anyway. So these are the drawings I've got. Or I always put the drawings the way I'm looking. So that's that alcove there. So we know we're going to need, let me just take my lid off the pen. We know we're going to need an inch and a half waste pipe here, somewhere, somewhere there. We know we're going to need an inch and a half or possibly even a two inch waste pipe over here for the shower. So we need a waste pipe over there and toilet comes up in that corner but because we've got i generally run inch and a half waste pipe anyway for my basins it just makes it easy i've got to buy two different sets of fittings so we know we're going to need inch and a half waste pipe there for them double basins anyway and the stack will be coming in this corner so we'll get all this put in for a start possibly we might have to have to upgrade that shower waste to two inch depending on the distance because obviously we're only allowed i think it's three meters of inch and a half before we have to upgrade into two inch waste pipe so we'll measure the distance it's possibly looking a little bit too far because we've got to come from there all the way to there so that might have to be in two inch yet but we'll uh, have a look at that when we get going and uh, obviously we'll make allowance for that when we do the bosses and stuff on the saw pipe so what i've done is just mark around the saw pipe fitting drilled a little hole and i jigsaw if i can get my jigsaw into the corner just jigsaw that out because obviously we'll have to put a T here. It doesn't show a vent on the drawing, but this will have to have a minimum of a substack on it. And then the toilet sits roughly somewhere here. All right, Jacob and I are just setting this saw pipe up in this corner. We've used short bar socket there. We're going to use a two inch for this um, shower waste because it's got a high flow. It's got a high flow shower head anyway. We've used is it a boss coming off the back? We just had to chop into the block work just a little bit to get that to get that in. But that's going to come through through there to pick the basin up. It's just always tight for him. And then we're going to put another short bar socket just to pick the bath up. So the other one will fit here somewhere. And the bath is literally only steady coming across to there. So it's less than three meters. So there should be ample fall, ample fall in there. So obviously the shower is the furthest away. So we set that the lowest. The basins are only here. And then, yeah, everything should be fine. So this is going to be two inch. I'm going to do that an inch and a half. Well, we have done that an inch and a half. And then uh, the uh, bath one will just be inch and a half as well, just to there. So done all the awkward stuff, really. It's always tricky, but yeah, should be okay. It's nice and solid. So yeah, no worries. Does anybody else cut the lid off the glue when it's getting low? They never make the bushes long enough to reach the bottom. It's still good glue. They always seem to make you want to buy more. So I've just been round and drilled out where we're going for the basin. I'm going to bring inch and a half up here because the basin sit on the floor. And then that's the bathroom. I'm going to leave the shower until we've got the tray in, just so we can work out exactly where it needs to be. But that's the saw coming up in the far corner. So we've got all our saw pipes and stuff in now, in this bit. So obviously the toilet sits there somewhere. This will have to be on a sub stack. Basin one's in. Bath one's in, and we haven't put the shower one in because we haven't got any two inch of the van. But that'll run from over there, along here. We need the base, uh, the shower tray, so we can work out where exactly the waste is going to go. I've just been round and drilled all my hot and colds through in this area. So hot and colds coming up there for the basins, 
haven't done these for the bath yet because I think it's a freestanding bath tap thing. But I'll sort that and then obviously get these put in. We are using speed fit on this job, it's just because the way the joists are, you can't really get copper in. But I'll show you downstairs in a second. So all we're doing is clipping along with our hot and colds. I've clipped them well. You can only sort of get them as straight as you can. So we've clipped along there. We're having a boiler and cylinder through in the garage. Our, our underfloor heat manifold's on the other side of that. So I've just started clipping all of these in. I take 22 to here as far as the bath and then just 15 across the basin. So Jacob's done all, all of that. They've all got good falls. We've still got to do the the shower one which comes out there but we need to run that in in two inch we just need to pick some of that up so the basin ones are all in and then just working on the hot and colds and stuff yeah should be okay so i've just come back upstairs i'm just working out where my shower waste is going to go it's a jt tray so they're always 130 mil in or 135 in from the corner so we just need to make sure it misses the joist so it's a 1600 by 900 so it'll either come here or there on the JT trays, so oh, obviously if that's Mr. Joyce and I've got a nice big area, I can cut this out. I've run a two inch, I'll show you downstairs, but I've run a two inch from over there, it's coming along, and then it'll just elbow across to here. I'm using sweat bends on it as well, so hopefully it's got a good fall as well. So I'm just gonna get all this cut out, and yeah, hopefully it should be okay. So that little hole there, is where my shower waste is going to come. So you can see we've got enough area in order to get the base, the, you know, the waste through. See, they are hot and cold. I know they're done in speed fit, but they are nice and neat, but best you can. And our two inch is coming along there. So at the minute I've used sweat bends. I've used a couple of 45s to get into the stack. All sweat bends and it's just clipped. It's got a big fall on it as well. Probably bigger than required. So we just put braces in. And it's just got to go about another two and a half meters just across to there, or possibly three. But other than that, we just need to put some more supports on that speed fit there. But you can only do your best to try and keep it as neat as you can, to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is just jigsaw a hole out. I haven't got the trail the waste on site, but I know that's where it's going to come from experience. So we'll have to look, because there's a timber or nog in here, we'll just have to look this way and then come along here. So I'll just cut this out and then when we get the tray we can set it all up. But I'm going to bring my waste pipe to here somewhere, so it should make it nice and easy to connect up. We're starting to get the copper hot and cold put through as well. It's plastic underneath, obviously, and then but they will straighten up. Co it's, I, I prefer using copper everywhere, to be fair, but it's just the nature of the job and the nature of how the joists are. So that toilet's in a unit anyway, so that should be fine. We're not too sure on the bathtub yet. We'll probably just leave tails underneath, and then we'll sort that when the time comes. The shower, obviously, it's built in shower valve, so we'll bring hot and colds up, and then the shower valve, I imagine, we we'll mount it centrally with a with a head and stuff so we'll have a look at that when it all comes but we just need to get the first fix done for today really right we're just up above the new downstairs shower room so these are my shower pipes coming off here and these these are flow returns we'll lag all these there's a trap door going in here anyway we'll lag all these these are going to go through to the boiler and the cylinder and stuff these are my hot and colds so i just need to branch off for the toilet and the basin but yeah Hopefully start to get a picture. I haven't filmed too much of this because I've not really had time. I just needed to get it in. But we'll try and keep it as neat as we can. And uh, obviously put a few more clips on these and lag all these. But just plastic just makes it so much quicker and easier really. But yeah, going okay so far. This is just what it looks like from below. So we've got flow returns on the back side. Hot and cold. And then what I've done, I need to clip them up yet. And these will just be copper coming down the wall. I've just chased in for a bar shower. That's that's easy enough to do. And then they'll, they'll get behind that behind that truss and then just pick up the speed fit connections at the top. What I always do is go around and screw sterling board where my radiators are going, just so you know you're going to get good fixings on the brackets. I just need to bring this pipe through at the right height now, and everything should be okay. So saves a call back to a loose radiator. Right guys, we're back on this one today. I've got to get all the concealed shower valves and stuff chopped in the wall. So we've got this cross water, I can't remember the model, but it's a twin outlet. So we've got rainfall head going up here and then a wall outlet down here. We've also got um, these twin outlet 
sorry, not twin outlet, single outlet, basin mixes, but there's two of these because there's his and her basins. The only thing I'm not too keen on these is flexes because I've got to chop them into the block wall. And I've just realised that the basin doesn't fit on the floor. It shows it as a unit, but I've just Googled the basin, it's got like a gap underneath. So I've got to chop all my waste and everything into the wall as well. And the hot and cold and stuff. So absolutely plenty to crack on with. It's already half nine because I've literally been two hours on the phone sorting stuff out as well this morning, which is not the best start to my day. So I've discussed with the customer where exactly where this is going. So I'll get everything marked out and chopped out. I'm probably going to bring, do away with M15s and bring 22 feeds in because I need to move them over here anyway. So it's no big drama. Certainly a bit of 22 pipe dropping down and then just get back onto the speed fit underneath. I've got the shower waste in the van as well. So that is in the right place. I have double checked with the tray now at the merchants. So I haven't got the tray on site, but I've got the waste. So I just need to pipe this in my two inches just just under there, that's obviously my 22 hot feed. And I've also got the the bath tap to set up as well, which I just drilled two holes in the floor just to roughly show where they're going. So I've got all that set up, it's a cross water one. It sort of sits up and over the top. So absolutely plenty to crack on with. So yeah, just I got a new tool bag, tool bag the other day as well. The first thing I did was cut my finger open and cover it all in blood. It's not too bad. The zip's a little bit broken on it. I think it came like that. I'm not too bothered. But just, which one is it? That one. It didn't really go up very well. It's already split at the bottom. But I think I'll keep it. It was only, it was only fairly cheap. But yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier than the old like tote bag that I had. Not as good as the PB one, but it does me. But it's typical. Dead in the centre of the shower where they want it is right where that roof strap is. I have just unscrewed it. I guess I can just probably move it across a little bit just to get it out of the way. Not too sure on the regulations. I'm a new plumber, but that's the centre. I'll get all this chased out. Obviously, I'm going to use PPE and stuff. And I'm just going to drop 222 straight down into the floor down there and pick them up. And then I'm going to take just 15s across into the into the stud in. But yeah, I will refix this. I will ask the builder as well if it's okay just to move it across just a little bit. But hopefully, I can just just sneak it in anyway but yeah obviously it's quite important because that's probably what holds the roof on but yeah not too sure what i always do is try and cross hatch it out and then you can just chisel this chisel these out quite easily then obviously i've got to set the depth up this one needs to be quite a long way to be honest with you and then i'll chase hot and cold down the sides and then just across but yeah try and get all my chasing done first but it's always a horrible job all right, so after about half an hour chasing, I've got something that looks like that. So my valve will sit in there somewhere. Obviously, I've got to set the depths up. What I'll probably do is try and get some plywood in the back of there as well, so I get better fixings. But you kind of get the idea. It's just a case of chiseling it out. I've probably got to cut into that stud yet a little bit. I'll get the mortar tool out and just just trim into here to bring my pipes through. And then probably, probably the same at the bottom as well, just to get through. But yeah, hopefully that should be okay. It's always a mucky job, but you know, it's got to be done. Hopefully the sun's not too bright. But what I'm going to do is take 22 in on my hot and cold. So use these 22 to three quarter male irons in on there. And then just these 22 to half inch on the outlets because the back plates are only 15 mil anyway. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'll get these locked tight in and um, yeah, get it screwed on the wall. So I've got my valve screwed in. I don't know if you can quite see it with the laser, but it is dead centre. What I'm going to do is put the chrome bits back on carefully and just check to make sure it's plumb that way and level that way. But it's solid because I've screwed screwed some timber in the back and obviously I've set it for the correct depth. So it's, now it's just a simple case. If I'm happy that it's plumb and level and the correct depth, I'll pipe it up. So I've obviously got hot drop, dropping down this side, cold into that side and then just the outlets. But yeah, hopefully that should be okay. Right, I'm happy with it. I'll just show you with this level. I carefully put it up against my chrome, my chrome shrouds that it is dead plumb. I'm happy with it both ways. That way as well, it's perfect. It's a brand new level as well, so it should be absolutely perfect. So it's dead solid. So I just need to get it, get it piped up now. And hopefully, I'll obviously take these chrome bits back off. And hopefully that should be fine. As I say, it's dead where they wanted it, dead in the middle. And I just need to take them across. But yeah, 
they're never easy they just I don't know they just take a bit of time really these do so I've just got myself a neat little notch out in the stud in that's the best you can sort of do really and then the pipes will just come into here and then I'll pick up the the outlets I've chased down into the floor so I just bend all this up I'll probably have to use an elbow there actually but I'll bend it all up if I can drop it into the floor with 22 copper and then I'll connect it in underneath on the speed fit yeah that should be okay as you're piping it up I always just double check to make sure that it doesn't move it's got to remain absolutely perfect because obviously it's the it's like the finished job so just be careful with your chromes but yeah it just wants to remain perfect so I've got the first that's not going to be the heart I just need to solder a socket on down there and get that through the floor the same with the cold and then they're to be honest they're like the winter and stuff ain't too bad to do but yeah right there my hot and colds all in they're all protected best I possibly can so I just need to do my outlets. It's one of them days where the phone will not stop ringing. Everybody seems to have problems today. So I'm not getting very much done, but it's just how it is sometimes with life. So I'll get this, get this dropped in. I'll get them put in. Hopefully the phone rings. It doesn't ring for a few minutes just so I can get this done. Right, I'm just setting these wall plates up. I've just double checked with the face plate for the shower to make sure it doesn't specify like which is supposed to be fixed head. There's no drawing or any. There's no markings on the chrome plate. Sometimes it will show like a rainfall head and then like a hose, but on this one it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to take that one to the top because it's on top, and that one to the bottom. So I just set these up. These are dead square solid. So that is the centre of my shower. That's halfway across. So everything should line up, and that should be the same height as the middle of the valve as well. And obviously the fixed head, I'll just have to put as high as I can. But yeah, it's just a case of mounting them and just piping them up dead easy, really. Right, these are all in and set. I just dented my pipe a little bit when I drilled through for that one. The reason I didn't do it there is because the screws and stuff. But yeah, I just need to cut that bit out now and just replace that. But other than that, everything should be set up. That does miss the cant of the roof as well. So it's a 900 tray. And it just comes out with the arm, if that makes sense. Yeah, hopefully that's all all right. Right, I've just got that bit fixed where I dented the pipe. I'm probably going to end the video there because I've got so much to crack on with this afternoon. This is taking me a little bit longer, but it needed to be right, it needed to be perfect, so just, I'm happy with it. So yeah, I'll um, end the video there. Hopefully I'll get this uploaded this weekend, if not, it'll be when it is, but you guys won't see any of that. But I appreciate you all watching, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Now then guys, we've got a few minutes while I'm waiting to get into a first aid course, so I thought I'd tell you the story of when I got covered in crap from head to toe. So I'd been working at this house for quite a few months. We'd replaced all the hot and colds, all the sanitary wear, or we put all new bathrooms in. It was a big old, it was a big old job, probably one of the biggest jobs I've ever done. And it was a, it was like a three-story house plus a basement. So if you imagine you've got four floors going up. And I replaced all the soil pipes in the house, but where I exited the basement, there was a four-inch pipe just disappearing through the wall. I cut that pipe there and put a cleaning eye on it, and then replaced all the soil pipe on that run you know, all throughout the house. It was a really awkward saw pipe run, but I replaced it all. And I got the whole job done. It was all perfect, all filled up, you know, nothing leaking, absolutely perfect. I get a phone call about six months after I'd finished and saying the drain was blocked. So my boss sends me out at the time. Bear in mind, I'm not very old. I'm, well, not very experienced. Um, I get a phone call saying, right, you've got to go out and unblock that drain or find out what's gone wrong. Anyway, I go to it, start untwisting my cleaning eye, and you can feel the pressure in this drain. You know, there's a lot of pressure. So I tighten it back up quick. I phone my boss up and say, right, I can't, I can't unblock this drain. There's too much pressure. He says, right, go outside and see if you can find any manholes. Lift them and see if, they, see if they're blocked. I go out. It's on, it's on a hill, this house. I go out, and it's like a council road. I'm not too sure. It's like a track, just a single track. I'm looking for manholes. There's, there's one about 300 metres down the bottom of the hill, which I can't get up because it's been driven over that many times. So I phone him up and says, right, I can't unblock it. He says, right, in the morning, you'll have to go out with the jetting company and see if you can get that manhole up and jet it back, you know, because the customer's giving him grief. So I go up the office next morning. He says, oh, I'll take these wheelie bins with you as well. He says, well, what are they for? He says, oh, in case you have to take that cleaning eye off. I says, oh, I'm not very keen on taking that cleaning eye off. He says, well, you might have to, you might have to. So he says, right. So I um I take these clean uh, I go out next day. Sorry, I just got distracted by uh, somebody in my mirror. I um 
I go back the next morning, this jetting guy's waiting. He says, right, this is the problem. It's all blocked up on this run. And we lift the manhole at the bottom. It's clear, the bottom of the hill. He says, right, we're going to have to take that cleaning eye off. I says, oh, are you joking? He says, no, that's the only way we're going to do it. So I set my bin up, untwist this cleaning eye. I thought I'd just let it go a little bit, see if I can get rid of the pressure. Anyway, no. As soon as I undo it, the pressure rips it out of my hand. Bearing in mind, I'm stood on steps underneath it. The crap comes flying out, hits the end wall. Luckily, I'd emptied everything out of the basement. There was all loads of stuff, so I'd moved it all out of the way because I knew what might happen. Rips this cleaning eye out of my hand. The crap hits the end wall. So there's that much pressure behind it, and I'm just getting covered at this point, you know, and I'm trying to get this cleaning eye, you know, block it or whatever I can, and it's just crap going everywhere. Anyway, after about two minutes of it absolutely pouring out, I'm trying to hold, you know, trying to get the bin, you know how you do, you're trying to get so much underneath it to, to stop it. it. It finally stops, the pressure's gone, and it's just seeping out then. Oh, God. So at this point, I'm, you know, it's all down my arms, all in my air, everywhere. You know, look, I don't think I had a beard at the time, luckily, but it was, it was everywhere. You know, I was like, oh, bloody hell, do you know what I mean? You know what we're going to do? Anyway, so the, the guy says, oh, we'll get the jetty down here. We'll just put it, I think they can put it on, back, wash it backwards or something. I'm not sure the correct terminology. I'm not a jetter. Anyway, we put it down. And it's just, just, it's all coming back into the, all coming back into the basement. I'm catching it at this point. You know, at this point I'm past caring. I just want to get the job done, clean up and gone. So I'm we're jetting this drain. Anyway, it goes, you hear it sort of go, or you feel it sort of go, I guess. So he said, all right, we'll put the camera down it. We put the camera down this drain. So, you know, he's he's reeling it out. I'm feeding it down. Anyway, you can see all these manholes that they're built on top of. So they're all built like flats and garages and stuff. Anyway, it gets to a point, it just drops. The drain, the camera just drops. It's on a dropper because it's on the house is on a hill. And then we, we try backing it up and we couldn't get the camera out then. You know, we are tugging on this camera, trying to get it out. It must have took forever to get this camera out. And you could see the manhole on the top. Obviously, I think I think it blocks on the dropper. I think it's where this, you know, the waste drops and it like splats. And normally you'd have a manhole on top, so you can obviously clear it out from that point. But obviously they're built on top of it here. So anyway, we get it all done. It takes me probably two hours to to clean all the floor. Luckily, the customer had gone out for the day, and they, they was only the wiser. But I get I get it all done, and obviously my boss is he's not blaming me, but he's saying, oh, the customer's not going to pay and all this. I said, well, it's not my problem. You know, I only replaced the pipework from that point. We can't be responsible for existing existing drainage. You know, if somebody's built on top of the manhole, that's their problem, not my problem. Anyway, I, I kind of learned a lot that day. Obviously, trust your instincts is one of the first things. If you know something's going to go wrong, because you know from experience or what might happen there's a lot of pressure in that pipe you also learn because obviously my boss wasn't prepared to go out and do the job himself if I've, i employ some lads now if i'm not prepared to do the job myself i wouldn't send anybody else to that job you know it doesn't bother me as a as a person so much if if i make a mis mess or a mistake or get covered in crap it doesn't really bother me as long as nobody else has got hurt if i'm employing somebody i'd sooner do that myself you know because that's on me then isn't it but yeah as i say i, I I said to my boss, this is that that drain needs rerouting because you couldn't get to any of the manholes. He says they need to reroute that drain out of the basement along the other side and put a new manhole in so it's not underneath anybody else's property. He says that's the only way because if it blocks again, I'm not going back. Anyway, about six months later, I get another phone call. That drain's blocked again. I says I'm not going because that's it. I says we gave you the option. I says I told you to go out and price to replace that drain, reroute that drain, and you, you didn't do it. I said, I'm not going back. So I don't know which mugging went back and took that cleaning knife again, but I certainly didn't. It was just one of the, probably one of the worst jobs I've ever had. And I remember I went home, because obviously my work stuff was ruined. It was all covered in, you know what. I went home, obviously chucked my trousers away, chucked my t-shirt away, had a shower. And it was just like, just standing there thinking, what have I just done? But at the end of the day, I think that would have happened to anybody. But I was the only one stupid enough to, to sort of listen to my boss and do it. So if you're not happy about doing something, don't do it. You know, if your boss isn't prepared to do it, you know, he shouldn't be asking you to do it. That kind of, that was a lesson learned from me. But yeah, I just thought I'd tell you that little story. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, sometimes plumbing can be one of the best jobs in the world, but also one of the worst jobs. But 
just stay safe out there guys because it is a jungle all right thank you for listening